Well, hello out there again in the YouTube land. This is Jay Kladek. Tonight, I'd like to do another kit review for you. And the subject of tonight's review is this little guy right here. This is a 172 scale model kit of the Redstone rocket, specifically Mercury Redstone, the rocket booster that carried both Alan Shepard and Gus Grissom into suborbit in uh, 1961. This kit is made by Dragon Model Corporation out of China. Uh, Dragon, if you're not familiar with them, they've been around since about the uh, late 1980s. They were at one time known as DML. They're based out of Hong Kong. And they're mainly known for aircraft and armor kits, but over the past year or so they've been branching out into a lot of space subjects. Uh, they've been doing pre-built models of, of uh, spacecraft and rockets, but they've been using the uh, the data from those pre-built subjects to also come up with model kits. Uh, they've done a couple of Apollo uh, command service modules and 172 lunar module as well, and they're even doing uh, model subjects in 148. Um, this little guy right here is brand new. I uh, purchased it at a local hobby shop last week for a sale price of $23.99. But you can find it for mm, about $21, $22 online as well. In some cases, even a little cheaper. Rather nice box art. Um, turning it around, if you notice, the back of the box has the instructions for the rocket printed on it building instructions paint instructions side here showcases many of the features of the kit display stand, fin detail, capsule um, if anybody wanted to do a uh, Mercury Redstone prior to this kit coming out they had limited choices um, if you were a plastic modeler, about the only thing you could do was either get the 1200 scale AMT Man Into Space set and build a very tiny Mercury Redstone out of that. Other option would be the uh, Glencoe models Jupiter C, such as the one I've got here. Jupiter C was the uh, the first satellite launcher, successful satellite launcher that the U.S. used, uh, but this was built from a redstone rocket. would take a little lengthening and then you could uh, combine it with the Revell Mercury capsule out of the Mercury and Gemini uh, model kit, which is actually coming back out from Revell sometime a little later this year. Uh, so it involves some kit bashing. Other options would be to uh, purchase a model rocket such as uh, one of the ones that Estes has done or one of the discontinued uh, Centauri model rockets but um, that's if you wanted to fly one but if you wanted one just for display you would either build the flying model rocket just as a display only model or you know, otherwise not much choices but anyway let's uh, open this up and see how it looks okay well, I've got the uh, box open, and here we see the contents. Not really that much to it. Uh, two parts trees, one decal sheet, another bag that contains three display stands. Um, I don't know why they put this many in here. Uh, these little guys right here would be, one of these would be used for the uh, Mercury Redstone. The, uh, the bigger one, I presume, would be used for a larger rocket or spacecraft model. It is nice to have them though. So you got something for your spares box if you like building this one and build and want to build other spacecraft or rocket kits. It's nice to have some extra display bases available. But anyway, let's take a look at the uh, detail of the model here. The parts on the Redstone booster are rather rudimentary. I mean Rockets don't necessarily have a lot of detailing. Um, the one thing that is pretty nice, though, compared to 
previous plastic model kits is if you notice the rocket se sections are molded in four complete cylinders as opposed to a couple of halves. Um, this is uh, Dragon utilizing their uh, new slide mold technology which allows them to mold semi-complicated structures like this. If you notice, these are uh, hollow and not uh, solid, so it keeps the weight down. Uh, four fins are molded rather nice. The one thing I really like about how the fins are molded is, I don't know how well you can see it, but if you notice, the the fin mounts are angled. The reason for that is, is even with Dragon's molding technology, the uh, slots in the lower part of the rocket stage do the draft angle of the mold are still going to be uh, having to go vertical. They can't go diagonal like that otherwise the uh, the part would not demold properly. Uh, so that's a nice clever way to get these to slot in and still align at 90 degree angles. The um, This is the engine nozzle. I am a little disappointed by the detail I see on the rocket stages. Reason being is uh, in the case of the redstone there are a few access hatches as it were that are rather prominently visible on the full-size rockets. Um, there's some actual there's uh, some actual redstone boosters down in uh, Huntsville, Alabama at the uh, Alabama Space and Rocket Center. This here is a uh, decal guide printout for a 148 scale decal sheet for anybody who wants to convert. And, well, hatches on the bottom it doesn't have. On the top there should be a couple of access hatches as well, which I wish they would have molded, but they didn't. The um, reason why I mention that is marking wise, sometimes on these rocket stages, when they were ready for launch, they would put like a form of duct tape on there to keep uh, moisture out in the uh, in the Florida environment and that tape would be visible on launch footage but um, I mean that stuff can be scribed obviously would have been nice if it was there but it's not um, the Glencoe kit on the other hand which is a reissue of the old uh, Hawk Jupiter C from the uh, from 1959-1960 um, it actually does have that detail so now in the case of uh, the scribe lines that are on this I've accented a couple of them with a uh, black pen it's not too bad although I don't know I was hoping for scribe lines like this deep one right here they would make it straighter than they did looks kinda sloppy so much so I'll probably just fill it and end up rescribing or painting it on myself Oh well. But hey, if I'm a, I'm a modeler, I can fix problems like this. I don't always like it, but I can do it. Let's take a look at the uh, capsule. <clears throat> well, the second parts tree contains parts for the capsule and the uh, escape rocket. Like so. One thing I think is really cheap of Dragon, though, is this clear area right here. I know this is where the uh, the heat shield and the retro rocket package were supposed to be molded. And I said, okay, we'll leave those parts out. We'll issue them as a separate kit later on. Very shrewd move, Dragon. I mean, would have been nice if you had had that there. Then I could have displayed the redstone next to the capsule, maybe on its side, have a nice little display. So because the box does advertise Mercury spacecraft with redstone rocket. Uh, but anyway, looking at what we got, um, detail on the capsule looks very good. These uh, <clears throat> shingles made out of a metal alloy called uh, Rene 41, which was like a blue-black metal, uh, not painted. Uh, basically, the alloy was colored that way. Looks very good. This is a single window for the pilot. On the back there should be a periscope mount. There's a flat plate for it, but I don't see the periscope itself. 
next to the uh, hatch here, uh, next to the window here, there is a side entry hatch. Um, this detail is accurate for uh, Liberty Bell 7, but it's not accurate for uh, Alan Shepard's Freedom 7. Reason being is Alan Shepard's capsule was a slightly earlier design where they didn't have that window there. Uh, they had two portholes on the side, but it did have the periscope. I'm going to modify this capsule to make it look like Freedom 7 for a reason which I'll explain when I get to the decal sheet. Um, detail on the escape tower looks pretty good. Uh, now there's a few parts on here that they've got on this parts tree that you don't use on the kit because they're designed if you display a mercury capsule by itself. Um, retro rockets, uh, posi grade rockets, uh, the flap, nose cone section with this flap. This little flap was on front of the mercury capsule. It was an aerodynamic drag flap so that if the mercury capsule was re-entering the atmosphere front to back it would automatically flip the capsule around so the blunt end would uh, face uh, towards the atmosphere and that way it didn't burn up on the way down. Generally I like what I see detail wise. Um, <clears throat> very buildable. Uh, looks pretty easy to do. Be aware though um, some of these parts are pretty small. Um, keep a well-organized uh, workbench if you build one of these and in the case of the escape tower pieces I would highly recommend using liquid well liquid solvent weld glues instead of super glue that way the parts melt together really nice okay decal sheet well, relatively complete you've got the uh, black and white checkerboard the uh, red United States logos two sets of US logos for the capsule, the MR7 for the booster, and it's got names there for both uh, Freedom 7 and Liberty Bell 7, which are the two-man spacecraft. Plus also you've got this metal rod here for the uh, display stand. Uh, reason I'm going to build it as Freedom 7 is because the decal sheet says MR7. That was the, uh, the number of the Mercury Redstone mission that uh, flew Al Shepard and the booster was painted with MR7 on it. Liberty Bell 7 actually had an 8 there instead of a 7 and Dragon did not include that as an option. So, sorry about the glare light. So, um, let's either modify the capsule or maybe get some tiny little number 8s and stick them in there to make it accurate that way. Um, but, I want to build it as uh, Alan Shepard's bird. Nothing against Gus Grissom. I, I've seen Liberty Bell 7 in person since they hauled it out of the ocean and it looks pretty nice. It's on uh, it's on display at the uh, Kansas Cosmosphere in Hutchinson, Kansas. And Grissom was a great astronaut. Um, don't let what you see in the movie, the right stuff, fool you. He did not panic and blow the hatch by himself. But, um, this is not bad. I like what I see. I wish it could have been a little better, but for what you get, it's, it's a pretty good deal. So, what do I think? Well, I think while this uh, model kit does have some relatively tiny flaws, it's definitely better than the alternative, which is a model rocket or kit bashing. Um... The parts count is low enough, so I think even a relative uh, novice with some experience with small parts can build it. Um, the only other knock I would say I have against this guy is the instructions on the back of the box are a little cryptic. Um, doesn't really give you a good guide as to the position of the escape tower or how the capsule is supposed to be uh, oriented on the rocket. Um, checking references online, for instance, the uh, Yahoo Space Modelers email group, of which I am a member and several friends of mine are, provides really good resources for this type of thing. And uh, Mike Makowski's Space and Miniature book series, I believe it's uh, spaceandminiature.com, 
He has a sim book on the Mercury capsule, which is a very valuable resource. Uh, has a little bit of data on the Redstone boosters as well. Uh, Rockets of the World by Peter Alway is an excellent book, which covers all the uh, space launchers worldwide, including the Mercury Redstone. That's a pretty good reference. As for me, well, although I'm working on a couple other things like right now, I think I could probably get this done in a weekend, so... You may see this get built up in the not-too-distant future, and I'll try to build it up as uh, Freedom 7, and I'll show you how to make the modifications to make that capsule accurate. Until then, um, have fun. Thank you, Dragon, for doing space models. Get your research a little better. You got a good thing. Just improve some minor things, and you got a really good thing going here. Thank you for watching.